purchase or decoration purchase. And let's do let's do some bypass on this guy. So does anybody have that plug gas? I just had seven point thank you. Okay. So BiPAP, and I'm a guy, so I like to draw pictures. <coughs> Bi stands for two. PAP stands for positive airway pressure. Okay, so there's two pressures with BiPAP. The same machine, in most cases, not in this case, but the same machine can do both modes. BiPAP does, and you'll see a lot more of this because it doesn't only help with oxygenation, it helps with ventilation, which is mainly what we're having with this problem. So we need to fix ventilation. So the common BiPAP settings are going to be IPAP and EPAP on the levels. IPAP's inspiratory, EPAP's expiratory, 12 and 6. For some reason, we always do 12 and 6. Centimeters of water pressure. So it's going to look something like this. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we go along. I didn't do 15 in the primary class. If I was going to look at this, and this is like time, and this is pressure. On our BiPAP, it's going to look a little bit like this when it's on a patient. And this should be going up to about 12. So our waveform is going to look like this. Breathe in normal, start a breath, it's going to fluctuate the pressure up to 12, and it's going to come back down. As they're breathing normal, they're breathing against the 6. What do you think this little thing right here is, this little blip in the pressure waveform? That's them starting a breath. So with BiPAP, this is the real key. Don't ever put a BiPAP on somebody who's not breathing. It's done a lot. People that are having periods of apnea, our respiratory rate is 4. Put a BiPAP on them. No, they need a ventilator because ventilator can augment their respiratory rate. This, the BiPAP, the best way to describe it is augments their spontaneous tidal volume. So we're going to give them more volume, but they have to start the breath. So when they start the breath, you're going to have this force of air going in each time. So we put this guy on 12 over 6 at BiPAP, and he's doing really well. I've actually seen patients before that have worked BiPAP before. Let's say they've been two days of shortness of breath. Put it on a patient in the ER, and as soon as I put it on her, within three minutes she fell asleep. She sat back and fell asleep because I took all of the work off of her muscles with that machine. They no longer have to work because every breath they take, they're working to get it in and out. If you put a BiPAP on, it does the work for them, and they can rest for once in the last two days. So when you see a patient respond that way, you'll know that they needed it really bad. Because if they slow down, this number goes up and the PO2 goes down really quickly. So if they start working really hard and they start wearing out, that number will go up and their pH will lower. So we put this gentleman on a BiPAP. So wait one hour. Now we have there's our new blood gas one hour later. He seems to be feeling better, as much as you can tell. His vital signs, his blood pressure came down, heart rate came down a little bit. His saturation is like 99% now. Um, what's the blood gas? <laughs> respiratory acidosis, <coughs> partially compensated respiratory acidosis. That's what the last one was too, right? Mm -hmm. Is this better or worse? Yeah. Better. Why? Yeah, it's not as acidic, right? So we're coming closer to baseline for him. We're still not there. And an hour, we probably should be getting really close to being there. So we're gonna, I'm gonna make you think like an RT now because we're gonna make some changes to the BiPAP to try to help this patient. So remember the way that we get rid of CO2 
is by increasing their tidal volume. How do you think we'd increase their tidal volume or their rate with this? This is like the connect the dots thing, it's kind of hard. If I was going to change these settings, let's say I have a respiratory, respiratory rate of 12, what would I, what would I change? <coughs> Good. Why? Because you're wanting to increase the amount of like oxygen that they can take in. That's right, Gene. So you would increase IPAP, and I'll show you why. So what you're going to do is if you block this thing off, IPAP does two things, oxygenates and ventilates. This is where you're oxygenating. This is where you're ventilating. If you increase the area of any one of these spaces, you're going to help that system more. So if we take this 12 and went to 16 with it, so now we are 16 over 6 with a respiratory rate of 12, but really we call it a backup rate because they're breathing on their own, maybe at like 24. So now instead of going here, we're going to go up to 16. These peaks are taller. We're increasing our space there, and then you're going to ventilate them better because you're going to give them a larger volume, and they're going to be able to exhale more. So that's, that's a great way to treat that patient. So... Let's say we do that. We ink, we spread that out a little bit, and we start ventilating a little better. So, <coughs> next blood gas. One more hour later, we got tons of blood gas. No, we have an art line on this guy, so we don't have. To. Okay, there's the next blood gas. Seven three six sixty three fifty five and thirty eight. So, what's the reading for it? Fully compensated. Fully compensated. Nice. Fully compensated. Respiratory does hurts when I say it. So, what's the thing that kind of like red flags you a little bit? Oxygen. Their oxygen went down. So we treat their ventilation. Their oxygen, went, oxygen went down. Now, not common to happen, but I'm doing it for this example. I'm going to make a bypass change for this. So in this case. I want to change their oxygenation or their EPAP, which controls it. Very similar to PEEP, as you would see on a ventilator. You increase PEEP, it increases the pressure down to their airways. So I'm going to take this patient and we're 16 over 6, restaurant rate 12 right now. We have that blood gas. Let's go to 16 over 10, respiratory rate of 12. All right, so we redraw this. This is going to go up to here-ish right there. Alright, so it's getting real messy. But you can see we increased that. We kept that at 16. And yes, it's going to help this. But it's going to hurt something else. What did we do to this area? We made it smaller. Therefore, we're not going to help ventilation as much. So when you help, when you go for oxygenation, you have to move both numbers. So if we left this on for like six hours, this CO2 might rock, might raise, it may, it may or may not. But So in this case, if I'm going to go up by four on that, I would go to 20 over 10. That would help oxygenate and keep the same ventilation. Yes? Is there like a rule, like as high, how high it can go, or like what's, like you said, you know, 12 and 6 is... Yeah, 12 and 6 is starting. If you get up around 20, I've seen the 24, uh, whoever volunteers will show it, you start leaking really bad around the mask. You can't get the mask tight enough on them to hold the pressure in. So, 20 over 10 would be ide ideal for this patient. So, let's say his blood gas, his PO2 comes up. Or we could change the oxygen too. But, so the real key is, that's great to have that, but what really tells you about ventilation <coughs> is the space between these two numbers. There's 16 and 6, there's a 10, there's a space of 10. This man has a space of 6. That tells you about ventilation. So that's what they told us in RT school. They said, you're looking at call that pressure support. So your pressure support gets larger, you can ventilate more. And I said, I want to try it on a patient. I really did. Mm -hmm. So a patient in ER, she came in like this. I put her on 12 over 6. And she had a blood gas, something like this. It wasn't real bad. Well, it's not like this. It wasn't really bad, but she didn't tolerate the the mask really well, and I was like, well, I hate to crank her pressure's too much. So instead of turning her top pressure up, I'm gonna put her bottom pressure at three. 
So what I did, I made a bigger gap between these two and it actually ventilated her, which is really cool. So it actually ventilated her better because I took this thing down, but what did I do? I made these taller and she ventilated better. So that gap between those numbers is really important for getting rid of somebody's CO2. That might have been too much for you. But that's how an RT thinks when we're messing with the pipe app. So, sorry, I probably lost about half of you. So let's do something fun now. <laughs>